It's World International Coffee Day, 1st of October. World International Coffee Day, it's World Coffee Day, International Coffee Day, 1st of October 2024. So I'm gonna talk about how I coffee, because I see lots of people putting up their coffee costings. Just blows me away. <laughs> uh, and this is coming from my perspective, and I do things way differently to most people especially when it comes to matters for dukery, fiduciary. I could make an argument, my electricity provider, when I'm at home, is paying me to drink coffee. I could make that argument. Okay, but let's just pause for a moment. We woke yesterday morning here in Australia to the news that the sailor had passed on at age 88 because he has been preceded in death by the starship captain in 2003 and the dam builder who slipped and fell into that wet concrete below in 2002. We are left with only the highwayman. Of course, I speak of Chris Christopherson who passed at the age of 88 and in that little group called the highwayman, he was predeceased by Johnny Cash, the man in black in 2003 and Waylon Jennings, the man with the silky voice in 2002. Willie Nelson lives on and remains, well, maybe not so strong. I've been listening to a bit of music of theirs yesterday and I'm not a country music lover by any means, but I don't mind these blokes. So the first one that always comes to mind for me is Sunday morning coming down and I guess fumbled through my closet for my clothes and found my cleanest dirty shirt. Corner hits home for someone like me, doesn't it? On this Sunday morning sidewalk, I'm wishing the Lord that I was stoned. I can relate to that. I'm sure many can relate to that. Of course, in the song they sing, it's possibly a, a Jennings song. Amanda, one of the lines is, fate should have made you a gentleman's wife. That probably relates to my wife having put up with me for nearly 40 years. Okay, so if you're confronted by death, particularly your own death, don't watch any further because after coffee, we're going to do a little bit of death. My death. So as you can see, I've moved to the summer headwear. I need something to partially control my hair in any case. Boy, doesn't it trigger people. It just really triggers people. Old men with long hair. I think it's great. I am looking a little bit rough this morning. I probably should wash my hair soon. So to understand where I come from, you need to understand that we were broke. This is a little patch over 30 years ago, and I do mean broke. If you want to equate it to swimming in the toilet, the toilet was being flushed, and I was going around and around trying to find a grab on the porcelain. That's not real easy to find a grab on the porcelain. But between the two of us, we managed to lever ourselves out of the porcelain and make some headway over the years to where we are today. Hasn't been easy, and we're certainly not super rich, but some things have treated us well. Most of our habits have never changed. So, two, coffee. Okay, first thing you've got to understand is we're going to get into one of the laws of thermodynamics here. And that's just a smart-ass way of saying to raise one unos litre of water by unos, one degree Celsius, takes a thousand calories. And without going through all the calculations, I'm just, this is pretty rough for me. So I'm just going to tell you that it's five or six cents to boil a litre of water, somewhere there, five to six cents. Of course, it depends on many things, the starting temperature of your water. If you're starting with water at one degree, it's going to take more energy to lift it to 100 degrees than if you're starting with water at 20 or 25 degrees or 30 degrees. Lots of variables in there. As I said, this is really, really rough, but rough enough to be close enough, and we'll just run with that. Depends on what you're paying for electricity. So let's just call it six cents. Let's go for the top end. Next thing you need to figure out is, and I guess you're getting the point by now that I don't drink the fancy shit. This is one of my beasts of choice. The other one is the old black and gold from Carl's and Woolworths. So that's a 500 gram tin, and we'll get into a secondary use for said tin later. So I, you know, I really have strong coffee. My wife makes it a little stronger for me when we're traveling than I make at home, but I do drink a lot of the shit, you know. When I was working, it was 20 cups a day. But I'm a one teaspoon man now in my mug. One of the better mugs I've owned, this one, given to me by the software people I used to use when I was at work. Good mug, that one. Gordon and Palmer, look them up. So one teaspoon holds about 1.4 grams, which gives me 357 cups out of said 500 gram tin. Said 500 gram tin at full price at the moment. I don't know, Coles worst one of the two. But we haven't, I've got some stories about them later, one other day. 14 bucks, and, and we'd never pay 14 bucks for it. So that's four cents worth of coffee. So we're up to 10 cents, 10 cents. I have mostly water and I have a bit of a splash and go at milk. 
between 10 and 20 milk, depending on how I splash and go. So let's say another five cents worth of milk. You can even call it 10 cents if you like. But five cents milk, five cents coffee, it's 10 cents, six cents for the power, 16 cents for a cup of coffee. And I appreciate it. And it's, it's unlike me to not have delved into the capital cost of the jug. Well, that was free, the mug, but the capital cost of the mug, those types of things. But we're pretty rough today, which is never going to be good enough for me. Oh, it's going to gnaw away at me. I'm going to have to come back and do it. So that's the coffee story. And no, I don't have a big coffee machine because at $500, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, way better off with me than some dirty, dirty, dirty electrical retailer. And it's just in your face all the time. They tell you you need it, you must have it. And, and I must not be a normal consumer because it doesn't induce me to buy a coffee machine at all. Another thing about the coffee machine, it takes so long. By the time you've got one, mate, I've probably consumed two. And as for standing in line in a coffee shop while someone makes you coffee, not for me, not for me. And I hear that masses ask, how ever could you justify, or could you make the case for your electricity provider to be paying you to drink coffee? Well, that's an easy one. So I've had solar for 14 years. We've had solar for 14 years. And yes, the same panels are still pushing out pretty much the same as they were when we put them on. I monitor all that. We put them on. They've never been dearer than when we put them on, or maybe before, but cost me a lot of money. Yes, they have paid for themselves. And we put them on in the 42 or 44 cent tariff. Now, I know some people get a little bit upset by that, but I can only play the game that's put in front of me, and I can only play by the rules of that game. That's just how it is. That was the tariff that was available. We signed up. I think it finishes in 2028, at which time I will make some other arrangement, be it a large battery or whatever the case may be, because I dislike intensely giving my money to power providers. So in the early days, we were getting a rebate of 2000 bucks a year, and it's back to about 1000 bucks a year now that we get paid to put electricity back into the grid. Right or wrong, that was the game that was on offer. I participated in that game. So that's how I make the case that our electricity provider is paying me to drink coffee. And, and even when we're traveling, if we're going to Brisbane, for example, for an afternoon and something, we will pre-boil the water, put it in some thermoses and a an insulated sort of a carrier. You know, we'll decide before we leave whether we need one, two, three or four coffees, depending on how long we're going to be away, and we'll make them at the car, we'll take some sachets of coffee. Similarly, when we are away in the dirty old caravan, while having breakfast, we'll boil up the water and put it in the thermoses and the insulated bag up in the cupboard in the van and we'll make those coffees as we need them as we see fit as we're going of course my wife doesn't drink coffee she drinks tea doesn't drink quite as much as me the unfortunate part is that i'm usually out of bed by three o'clock in the morning and i could have had three or four by the time she gets out of bed some days i try to slow down some days i just wolf right into it so that's me and coffee and my wife tells me that we should do something on tea as well that the loose leaf stuff is cheaper than the tea bags which obviously is what we use when we're traveling we haven't got that tight yet that we use a tea bag multiple times but i am tight make no mistake about that there's nothing gives me greater satisfaction than not spending money the second thing is when i do have to spend money that i achieve value from that spend but nothing gives me greater satisfaction than not spending. So that's my coffee bit. So on to my secondary use, and if you're confronted by death, particularly your own, possibly don't look anymore because I'm gonna combine my death with my macabre and dark sense of humor. So we recently buried my mother, six months ago now, and I thought, what a fucking hideously expensive Expensive exercise this is. You blokes have to be kidding me. Even to run the guys to do a video out there to where she wanted it to be, I could have run a road train for less than that. Astonishing prices. Anyway, so I'm thinking it's time I put in place what I'm going to have. And I was going to say for my funeral, but there won't be a funeral in my particular case. Because once the Grim Reaper, here forward known as Grim, taps me with his scythe and calls me home, we'll go to the freezer or the fridge, unless of course there needs to be some sort of coronial inquiry or huge autopsy. So we'll go straight to the fridge, fridge to the fire, scrape out the fire chamber through the bone grinder. What a better place to be stored than the old international roast coffee tin. Uh, my wife says I'm not 
going to be on the shelf in her house or that she's living in. I do assume that I'll go before her. Perhaps the kids could write something on some black texter, you know, dad or the old man, something like that. I would have liked to have been some of it sprinkled at Granville Harbour or Trial Harbour in Tasmania, but my daughter thinks that that's some sort of biological hazard. So perhaps we could just be a bit of bone meal in the garden somewhere. There ain't no way in the world I'm going to lump that sort of money into the last bit of I was going to say life but life's done you're over you're dead and you know before we go into the fire let's just put me in an old Asian bag wrap me up in a tarp tarp won't be any good be a bit of plastic be a bit of black smoke coming out that chimney it's a reduction of cost and my mother's funeral was not what would be classified as expensive but it was still hideous 